Welcome to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Boise, Idaho, on this Sunday, January 2nd of 2022. Merry Christmas. It is Christmas after all. This is the ninth day of Christmas. Any time now, Amazon should be delivering to your doorstep your true love's nine dancing ladies, all in a tightly sealed plastic mailing envelope. Three more days of Christmas to go, but it's already hard to find Christmas decorations up anywhere. As far as the neighborhood is concerned, the party's over. No doubt by now you've heard enough 10 best of 2021 lists to be sick of them. Top 10 news stories, top 10 religion stories, top 10 sports stories, top 10 human interest stories. And what do you think will make the news in 2022? What will, we, what will we be remembering a year from now? And what will we needlessly fear and worry about for the next 12 months so that we can put out of our mind the overwhelming fears we should worry about, but don't know what to do with them? And what difference does Christmas make? By the time we've list, we're listing the top 10 of 2022, what difference will this Christmas make to what happens next? What shall we do with this? Will we hold this year, put it in perspective, forgive ourselves and forgive those who have sinned against us? Shall we keep this year and grow from it or return it? Let's begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sends the word with angels, who has made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace to all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace, that all we do in word and deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to 
to God's people on earth. All glory be to our God and be so worthy given. Let angels sing, let all reply, good will raise forth from heaven. Lord God, almighty heaven's King, we worship you, our thanks we sing. also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, may live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Every one. 
stars of night and call each one by name. like ashes you send your word and melt them your wind blows the waters flow bless the Lord my soul who heals the broken hearted the peace of God shall be your hope God's finest your food. The Word of God fills all the earth as rapid as the whirlwind. Bless the Lord my soul who heals the broken The Gospel for the second Sunday in Christmas is from John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him is life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of man, or, nor of the will of the flesh, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, the tree is down. The pretty lights are off. All those high expectations of the holidays burned out before the light's dead. Every twinkling thing is packed away. You don't even want to think about Christmas anymore. But here, on the second Sunday of Christmas, with hardly anything left of the season to celebrate, we have the Christmas story all over again. Except this time, John is telling the story, and it seems as if he's forgotten all our favorite parts. The baby, the manger, the shepherds, the angels, where are the magi? None of them make the cut in his gospel. John's Christmas is simple and plain. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. So something has happened. Something old as God, and yet as new as the first day of creation. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
So the whole created order has been disrupted. And the world will never be the same again. You can ignore it. You can disbelieve it. You can reject Jesus. But God will not be denied. God has laid claim to the future. Your future. The future of all humankind. Grace and truth has come through Jesus Christ, John says, and you are not your own anymore. You and your entire world belong to God and God wants it back and God is taking it back. It is the will of God that work among you. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it, John says. God is sovereign. God will do what God will do with your life or with anyone else's life. We're used to thinking that the future is something we can do something about, that we can influence. We may not know what the future holds, but we like to think with, but with enough effort and the right choices, we can have an impact on what the future might look like. At least the powerful ones among us, the leaders, the rich, the movers and shakers in the political realm, they can do something about the future, can't they? But whatever small power we might have to choose what tomorrow will look like, John makes it clear that ultimately the only thing that matters is the will of God. The future lies beyond our power. You can't do a thing to bring the future nearer or stop the future from arriving. It is in God's hands, not yours. But that doesn't mean that everything is fated, that we can't make any choices about our lives or have any influence on the future or even on God. It's not like everything is settled and preordained. You're not a puppet on a string with God twisting and pulling you this way and that like a wooden doll. For then God would be lonely, alone, with no need of us. And we would just be mechanisms to play with, not creatures with whom God wants a relationship. John insists that God is the creator and earnestly desires a relationship with his creatures. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world, John says. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. And you can feel the sadness of God in those words. Rejected, unknown, treated like a stranger by the very ones God's love created. Now this isn't fate, as if your every, your every step was determined beforehand. But neither are you and I completely free, as if we could decide what we want the future to be, even our own fut personal future. For then we would be lonely, trapped in a myth of individualism, condemned to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, as if we didn't need anybody, as if needing God was a sign of weakness instead of a sign of everything we hope for. Then God, would just be a mechanism for us to play with. Not a creator with whom we have a relationship, but just an errand boy to fulfill our wishes. This is God the creator, taking control of his beloved creation. In God's own mysterious, sometimes baffling way, this is God asserting God's freedom. But it is God asserting God's freedom for you. Christmas, according to the Gospel of John, is the mystery of God having God's decisive way in your life and in the life of the world for the good of the world. The Gospel of Matthew puts it even more succinctly when it tells us that the name of the baby will be Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Gospel of John says pretty much the same thing. And the word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. God is with us. God dwells among us. God is still at work among us, full of grace and truth, adding grace upon grace. The future is not in our hands. It's in the hand of God. 
There's plenty of darkness in the world, enough to make you wonder how God could really be in control or how the coming of Jesus, God with us, makes any difference at all. We look for Christ, the Word of God, living among us and find our vision clouded by wars so endless we've forgotten they even exist. By shooting sprees in Denver and children ambushing teachers in Iowa, refugees tricked in being political pawns, our own inability to find common ground with each other, and countless other reasons to wonder about the future of the planet and just the ordinary disappointments of life. You can look for Christ here among the believers of God's community, Christ's community of followers, but that's always a risky venture. Here you'll find saints and sinners and everything in between. We can disappoint you too. But that's just it. <clears throat> this is a dark old world in which the light shines. This is a world in which the living word comes. This otherwise hopeless place is where God makes his home among us. The God of the future chooses to make a home among us in the present, in these dirty details of everyday life, and in the poverty of our inability to change it. God is always gracious, always for life, and remarkably resourceful in the face of every death-dealing evil. The purpose of God, John says, is and always has been to forgive the past, redefine the present, and open up the future, and bring life into being. No one has ever seen God, John says. God remains hidden from us and mysterious. God's will is unknown to us. Sometimes you just can't figure out why God does what God does. God seldom gives us the details or explanations we might like. So we have to admit that God's actions do not depend on our human resolve or our willingness to go along or our understanding or our free will. The future depends upon God and God alone. We move beyond Christmas now to a new year with all the dirty details of its daily life and the darkness of its daily news. But we carry with us a promise of God with us. God who has taken the future out of our hands and into God's hands. Nice as it is when we finally get some of our questions cleared up, understanding God is not the most important thing. A sovereign God, a mysterious God, a God who holds the future in his hands is not so much to be understood as to be worshipped. We are left to wonder, not explain, to marvel and praise and be grateful, to light candles in the darkness, and when others fear or when worry gets the best of us, to insist that something has happened in the world, something old as God and yet as new as the first day of creation, Life has come into being in Christ, and the life is the light of all people. God is with us. God is with us. Hold on to that in this new year. God has dwelt among us in Christ, and God is still at work among us, full of grace and truth, adding grace upon grace, holding our future in God's hands. And that makes tomorrow and a new year something to look forward to. Amen.
Christ to thee with God the Father and the Holy Ghost to thee. In them chant and I thanksgiving and unweary praises me. Honor, glory, and dominion and eternal victory. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You make yourself known through your word, spoken through the gift of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology and with languages different from the ones we readily understand. May your church be a place where all languages are celebrated and your word is spoken and sung so that all may hear and understand. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Emmanuel, God with us, in your name we are assured that you are with us. By your power, Enlighten nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names and identities have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption process those in the foster system, and sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss. Give grace to those who care for the sick and renew their strength. Empower those who care for our illnesses and tenderly embrace all in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You journey with us through change. Guide those who will assume new roles in this congregation over the coming year, and those making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. Guide us in this congregation to explore and embrace new people and new ways of serving our community. As the seasons and the calendar change, Equip us for unexpected challenges. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give you thanks for all who have modeled lives of loving service. Comfort those who mourn loved ones and lead us in your grace until with your saints, we enter the fullness of your glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, giving thanks for Christ who comes to us in this holy meal. Holy God, source, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light to the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in the darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your Spirit, bless us and this bread and cup, that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you have been able to gather bread and wine in your home, or if you have but bread or wine, please gather it now and we will commune together, rem remembering the words of Christ's promise. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have heard so much about freedom in these pandemic days. We have argued and protested and stormed the Capitol to insist that we have the freedom to do whatever we want. We've chosen up sides, depending on which definition of freedom means we won't have to change our minds. But when I read today's gospel, all of that seems to me like so much childish tantrums. Each of us wailing, you can't make me, you can't make me. And God doesn't seem much interested. God just rolls God's eyes like that frustrated parent in the grocery store, once again, prying the candy we have stolen from our tiny little fingers. 
teaching us once again that we cannot just take what we want, that we live in community, that life depends on relationships, relationship with your God and relationship with your neighbor. And relationships, gift that they are, nonetheless take care and maintenance. They demand of us love and responsibility and forgiveness and mercy. And as John says, grace upon grace. And then there is God, John says, God the only truly free one among us, God whose purpose is and has always been to forgive the past, redeem the present, and open the future, and bring life into being. God is with us. Hold on to that in this new year. God dwelt among us in Christ, and God is still at work among us, full of grace and truth, adding grace upon grace, holding our future in God's hands. God is not finished with creation. And that makes tomorrow and a new year something to look forward to. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share God's gift of love with all. Thanks be to God.